Hello, Mr. Collier here. I want to give you some sample problems in the vector and relative motion chapter. So one key thing that I think is going to be helpful when you are doing your problems with this stuff is that you represent vectors of different sizes with arrows of different sizes. So if you have something that is, you know, say 10 meters, it should be an arrow that's roughly twice as long as something that represented, say, 5 meters. By uh, doing this, you're going to have your picture tell a story that is a lot closer to reality and you can figure things out a lot better like the length of the resultant vector or even the angle that's formed between them. Uh, if things are drawn to scale it'll uh, be reflective of the reality. So I'm going to do three different problems here. Uh, the first one is just uh, straightforward adding multiple different vectors and these are all north, south, east, and west. So let's say we walk 10 meters north and then 5 meters west and then 2 meters south. Now the question is how could our friend walk from where we started directly to where we are? So by drawing the pictures and drawing them to scale you can get a pretty good idea that they're going to walk at something in the general northwest direction. But now we actually want to calculate it. So we need to figure out how to calculate the length of this resultant vector. Uh, the way that you're going to do that is to set up a right triangle. So if we think about this as a right triangle, we know that this side is 5, and uh, this side over here is 10, so just this little portion that we're concerned with is 10 minus the 2 from over here. So this is actually an 8 meter side. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we could do 8 squared plus 5 squared equals r squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that'll let us solve. That's going to look like this. The square root of 5 squared plus 8 squared will give us the answer to that side. So it's 9.43 meters. Next, we want to figure out what angle it's at. So we want to figure out, uh, I'm going to represent this angle here uh, to help us understand what direction they should walk in. So again, we know that this is 5 meters, and we also know that this is the side opposite of that angle. And we know that this is 8 meters, and it is the side that is adjacent to that angle. So now what we can do is we can take the inverse tangent opposite over adjacent to figure out what that angle is. And that's going to look like this, the inverse tangent of 5 over 8, and that's going to give us the angle that they should walk at. So then we put those two things together and we can describe the distance, that's the uh, magnitude of the vector, and we can talk about the direction. And again, you want to be careful uh, when you're figuring out this angle to describe it in terms of directions that are kind of used in the problem. So this problem uses uh, the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, and so I'm going to do that. You'll see later that we talk about things in relation to a uh, river current, and uh, we're going to use our answer in relation to a current as well. For this next problem, we're going to have to break our vectors into their components. It's still going to be useful to uh, draw a diagram, so we're going to travel 8 miles at 35 degrees north of east, then we're going to go 2 miles north, and then we are going to go 5 miles at 26 degrees south of west. Now, unless you're drawing this with a protractor and a ruler, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see exactly what's going on, but the nice thing is we can break these vectors into their components. And that's going to be how you start problems where you have vectors that are at angles. You're going to break that angled vector into an x and a y. So quick reminder here. So if this vector here is at an angle, some amount of it is in the x direction and some amount of it is in the y direction. That 35 degrees has an opposite side over here and an adjacent side over here and we know the hypotenuse that's this 8 miles. So now we can do a little bit of basic trig to figure out what the opposite side is which is going to be the y and opposite is going to be sine and with the adjacent which is going to be the x and that's going to be the cosine. That's going to look like this. You take the magnitude of the hypotenuse multiply it by the cosine of the angle and that gives you the amount in that direction. So while we're going at this angle uh, at 8 miles total, only 6 miles of it is to the east. The rest of it is going to be in the y direction, which we'll tackle in just a second. Uh, this middle guy, the, the 2 miles north, that has nothing in the x direction. And then uh, this last little leg does have some in the x direction, so we're going to break that up the same way. 
by doing cosine. And the math is the same. We take the uh, magnitude of the hypotenuse, that original amount. We multiply it by the cosine of the angle that it's at. And then that gives us the uh, magnitude of the westward uh, walking. Now in this case, I set that equal to a negative number to remind myself that if east is positive, west is negative. So when I uh, sum these, I'm actually subtracting. And so the total displacement just in the x direction, right? So we went some to the left and then some to the right is two miles east of where we started. Now that's only part of the puzzle. Let's keep going. Now we need to do the same thing in the y direction. So in the y direction, as I mentioned, we're going to use sine. So we're going to take this original angle uh, and we're going to take the sine of 35 degrees, tells us that it's about four miles north, right? Then we're going to take that middle uh, vector, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just two miles north, so we don't even need to break that into sine and cosine. It was straight north, so it's all in the y direction. Then we're going to take that last component and do the sine uh, there. And in this case, again, just to remind myself, I made it negative. Now, you wouldn't really say negative two miles south. You would just say two miles south. I'm just putting that negative in there to remind you that when we sum these, that's a opposite direction, so we're subtracting it rather than adding. I sum that, and now I have my total uh, vector components in the north and in the east. So I know that this is uh, north and east of where we started, but I want to do better than that. I want to know actually what is the length of that resultant vector. So now we're going to be able to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we're going to be able to solve. So I have that uh, a squared is my x direction, b squared is my y direction. I take the square root of those, and I get my total displacement. So I would have to go 4.86 miles, and the direction, just like that previous problem, is going to be using the inverse tangent of those two components to figure out what angle. This angle here, uh, I'm going to call that north of east because uh, I did it relative to the x-axis. And that's our second problem. For this last problem, we're going to talk about relative motion, which is objects that are moving uh, relative to each other, so you've got multiple pieces of movement. In this case, we want to go straight across a stream that has a downstream current of 2 meters per second. Our boat has a still water speed of 5 meters per second, so we're going to have to point it somehow into the current. And we also want to have a bonus question here of how long will it take to cross the stream if it's 100 meters wide. So first what we're going to do is we want to look, we've got this 2 meter downstream current. If we want to go straight across, we're going to have to uh, point into the current at some angle uh, because the current is going to push us. And then hopefully we can go straight across. So really the question is, what is this angle that I need to point into the current to make it straight across? And this is actually pretty straightforward now that I've drawn the picture. Drawing the picture is actually the hard part. Now I'm simply going to figure out uh, what that angle is. And since I know the opposite and hypotenuse, and that is, I guess, a little trick here. You have to remember that this is actually the hypotenuse of this triangle. Uh, we're going to be able to use the inverse sign to figure out the angle into the current. And again, we want to use language to describe the direction that is reflective of the problem. So in this case, I'm going to say into the current, or you could also say upstream, from straight across. Now I want to figure out how fast I'll actually end up going. While my boat might be going 5 meters per second relative to still water, I'm not in still water, so I'm getting pushed, and I'm actually, some of my energy is keeping me from drifting downstream, so my actual speed will be uh, less than 5, and you can tell that from our, our triangle math, right? A squared, we're actually looking for B squared, because we already have C. And so that's going to look like this, our B, right, this unknown is going to be equal to our hypotenuse squared minus our opposite side squared and we're going to take the square root of that. So that gives us our speed across the meter, uh, across the river, even though our boat is going five meters per second to keep ourselves from getting pushed downstream, we have to angle it and we have to make it end up so that we actually cross the stream a little bit slower, but we make it straight across. To figure out the speed, or the total time, we're going to take the distance that we travel, divide it by the speed of our boat, and we get 100 meters in f at 4 meters per second gives us, it's going to take 21.8 seconds to cross the river, and that's basic uh, 
speed equals distance over time calculations. So there's three examples. I hope you find them helpful. Good luck.